Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Wrestling Changed My Life podcast. Your host, Ryan Warner. Howdy and how are you? Now, this is not our normal type of podcast. Typically, we have guests on and we'll talk through their career and understand how the sport changed your life. However, given the Yanni Zayn arbitration ruling next week, I thought it was only fitting that we recap one of the most controversial and most historic arbitrations in wrestling history, and that's Leroy Smith, Randy Lewis, 1984, for the U.S. Olympic team. And given the Soviet boycott that year, many felt they were wrestling for the gold medal, right? If they made the team, they were going to win flat out. So, all right, so what, what was going on at this time? So let's kind of take a step back. August 20th, 1982, big change happens, and that's USA Wrestling becomes a national governing body over AAU. And fast forward to March 83, Gable's the head coach of the Olympic team. This is during the Hawks' reign. They're absolutely murdering everybody. They're the best team in college wrestling by far, and Gable's the coach. Now, this wrestle-off, obviously, is between two of the wrestling powers, right? Randy Lewis was a two-time national champ for the Hawkeyes. And let's not forget that he won the junior worlds in high school. And he also made the finals of the 76 Olympic trials as a high school junior. And then he made the team in 80, but didn't get to go because of the boycott. So Randy Lewis, one of the all-time greats, no disputing that. Leroy Smith, though, Oklahoma State, part of the Smith dynasty, also one of the greats. 1980 NCAA champ. Won the equivalent of the U.S. Open back then in 80, 81, and 82. And then in 83, he was second in the world. And in fact, going into the 84 trials, he was 4-1 and one over Randy Lewis. Okay, so Leroy Smith, by far the favorite over Lewis going into the 84 trials. So now let's get into it. So the 84 trials were unique because for weights that were super competitive, like this weight class, which was 136 and a half, they actually did a four-man bracket with best of three round robin for all of the wrestlers. And the other guys you might not know of are Ricky Delegata and Daryl Burley, who were studs in their own right. So you got these four guys wrestling in a four-man bracket, best of three, right? So you got to wrestle a ton of matches. So you know, June 21st, 1984 rolls around. We're in Allendale, Michigan. The first, uh, first match was Delegato and... Delegata, excuse me, and Burley, Delegata won two of three. But the match that is disputed to this day happened on June 21st as well, and that was Leroy Smith, Randy Lewis. Now, Randy Lewis comes out, again, he's, he's one and four against this guy. Randy Lewis comes out, it's J. Robin Gable in his corner, and in um, Leroy Smith's corner, I believe it was Joe Say at the time. Um, maybe Tommy Chesbro as well. Randy Lewis actually takes match one. And despite that match being protested, they go to match two. Lewis wins the match. Or so it seemed, right? Right after the match, it was protested. There was a, uh, there was a, a crotch lock scenario where uh, Lewis might have exposed his back. Maybe he didn't. And I'll post a video and the link to this in the time of when that happened. But it was super, super questionable, super controversial on both ends. And what happened was five officials go back to the room behind closed doors and they all voted that Smith had won the match and that it should be re-wrestled. Okay? And so match two essentially is null and void. They got to re-wrestle match two. While this is happening, Randy Lewis has no idea... He's jogging in plastics in the back to get his weight down for the next day. Here's his name called. Obviously, it was shocked because he thought he beat the guy. Has to go back out there and re-wrestle match two against Leroy Smith. Smith wins 13-0. And you can imagine the kind of headspace Randy Lewis was in at this time. He went on to say that he doesn't really even remember the match. He was kind of phased and was confused on what was happening. And then in match three, which is actually match four, in match three, Leroy Smith is up. And Randy Lewis ends up defaulting because of a knee injury. The next day, Leroy Smith wins out, beats everyone in two straight matches, makes the Olympic team, gets his picture taken on the Olympic team, gets all his gear. He's going to the 84 Olympics in LA. Now, a couple key things here. Once Randy Lewis realized that he had to re-wrestle match two, he and Gable and his dad 
protested that they should be able to get they should be able to have a day allowance, and that was actually denied at the time. And that'll come back later in this conversation. Um, okay, so about a, a week or two later, Lewis and Gable apply to USAW and the USOEC to have a match to re wrestle. That's denied. So then we go to uncharted waters. July fifth. They take this to federal arbitration in the Windy City, my hometown, Chicago. And imagine the scene here, right? You got Dan Gable, the U.S. Olympic coach, also Randy Lewis's personal coach. You got J-Rob. You got a couple of refs in there who are supposedly experts, and I'm sure they were. And the arbitration begins. And from what you read, USA Wrestling did not take this that seriously. Now, I have to mention that USA Wrestling was headquartered in Stillwater, Oklahoma at this time. Whether or not that had any impact on this is up for speculation. But USA Wrestling admittedly went into this arbitration thinking it wasn't that big a deal. And in fact, they didn't even have lawyers. Uh, Whereas the Lewis uh, clan, they had lawyers. And so the uh, arbitration begins. And essentially, this whole arbitration was was over the fact of did Randy Lewis get a fair shake at the 84 trials? And some things went into it, like you know the tournament director having uh, ties with the Smith family and you know, a lot of other things that are mere speculation at this point. The bottom line is, on July 12, 1984, the arbitrator ruled, and I'm going to quote him here, the results of the third and fourth Lewis-Smith matches are vacated, overturned, and of no effect, and that Lewis and Smith are directed to re-wrestle the disputed match from the point of controversy, with Lewis leading 5-4 with 84 seconds left. Lewis and Smith are directed, to wrestle the, are directed to wrestle the next day, which was Friday, July 13th. And then on Saturday, July 14th, Delegata and, uh, is supposed to wrestle the winner of Lewis and Smith. So let's, let's take a step back. I do think that it was probably the right call to re-wrestle the match. Because I hate when a match ends with someone being the winner and then they overturn it, making the other person the winner. Which exactly is uh, what's going on with Yanni and Zayn right now. So I do think the match probably should have been re-wrestled. The crazy thing is that the arbitrator said it should be re-wrestled with 84 seconds left with Lewis leading. Now, again, keep in mind, a lot of wrestling fans don't even believe there was any merit to have the match return in the first place. And Lewis really got the raw end of this whole deal. Again, speculation either here and over there. I'm just reading the facts here, people. So July 12th, you know, this is a Thursday in Chicago. Lewis essentially wins this arbitration. And, you know, keep in mind, he had that knee injury at the 84 trials, and so he hasn't wrestled since. He's just been hanging around the air dime bike, Gable style. So he has to fly out to Big Bear, to meet Lewis and Team USA July 13th at Big Bear, excuse me, Smith, who's already been training with Team USA. And you got to imagine, I mean, what a, a tough thing to be Leroy Smith at this time because, you know, he is out there training with Team USA at Big Bear, and he thinks he's the guy, but in the back of his mind, this arbitration is going on. You know, lo and behold, July 13th comes around, and he has to re-wrestle Randy Lewis down 5-4 with 84 seconds left. It's a tough scenario, and it's a really tough situation just in general. Well, what happened was Lewis won, right? He hung on to the, the one-point lead with 84 seconds left, and just like that, Leroy Smith is out. Randy Lewis beats Delegata the next day in two straight, and you know Randy Lewis is the Olympic uh, nominee, so to speak, at that point. He's our guy at 134 and a half. Randy Lewis goes on to win the Olympic gold, and the rest is history. Now, you got to tip your hat to Leroy Smith, who could not have handled this whole thing better. And I'm looking for the quote now. Here's, here it is. And he goes, I mean, obviously he's broken up, he's shattered. He actually left the country during the Olympics, didn't want to be around it, and, and who could blame him? Um, but he actually says, you know, if this is the worst thing that happened to me in life, then I'm a lucky person. And and I've, I've interviewed Leroy Smith, and you know, this whole scenario, Leroy versus Randy, is going to be a section on the uh, audio documentary I'm doing for Dan Gable that's coming out in August. So we're going to hear from both Randy Lewis and Leroy Smith uh, on the documentary in, um, in August. But, you know, I could just say that Leroy Smith is a great guy, couldn't be nicer. And, 
you, re you really feel for both of these guys because you know they were just kind of victims of the system, so to speak. Now, kind of the aftermath of this whole thing is that <laughs> the fact that it was Oklahoma State, Iowa, only added to this already amazing rivalry that we have. And you'll see that you know, as we move through the 80s, you know, 85, 86, 84, 85, 86, Iowa wins. Uh, 86, they have one of the best teams of all time. Second all-time in points scored. And then 87, of course, Iowa State beats Iowa. And then Oklahoma State gets a little bit of a run going. John Smith becomes the head coach. They win two straight. Um, so this whole feud between Gable and Leroy Smith Sr. And Leroy Smith Sr. had some choice words for Gable. Let me tell you, he was not happy that uh, the Olympic coach was backing his guy. Of course, Gable was just saying, hey, I'm backing wrestling. And I truly believe that. Um, needless to say, the tension between Oklahoma State and Iowa only skyrocketed after this. Um, USA Wrestling actually censored Dan Gable because he wasn't backing the governing body, which you got to respect that. He was backing his guy. But I'm really curious to see what happens with Yanni and Zane. And it, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, to me, the arbitration with Yanni and Zane is very similar to this. In that the arbitration for Yanni and Zane should be looking at did Penn State have any ground to challenge this call? And I'm going to say no, because the Brit came in way after. Now with uh, Leroy and Randy, it's very similar, because Gable was adamant that at the time you couldn't challenge judgment calls. And in fact, the scoring exchange in question was a judgment call. So by rule, you could not challenge that. And uh, the arbitration ruled in Randy Lewis's favor. So if history is on our side... We will hopefully see a match three between Yanni and Zane. But then the question becomes, well, what is the arbitrator rule? Do they have to re-wrestle match two? Will they start from the point of the exchange, which is about 60 seconds left? Let's hope not, because I think that was one of the whole kind of faux pas of Leroy Smith, Randy Lewis, is that they had to re-wrestle from 84 seconds left, which, I mean, how awkward is that and how tough is that to do? So... This is kind of my take on the on the whole uh, Leroy Smith, Randy Lewis controversy that happened in the eight, in eighty four, and really curious to see how it's going to bake out with Yanni and Zane. Fingers crossed they get to re wrestle the third match in Austin the same day as uh, Ringer and Dick. So we'll see. And that's all for me, folks. Again, this is Wrestling Changed My Life. Ryan Warner, I'm the host. Please visit WrestlingChangedMyLife.org for past episodes. We just went live with Steve Garland today. He's the head coach at University of Virginia. Chris Bono was last week. That's one of the most downloaded episodes of all time. And we have some pure fire interviews coming out. Jaden Cox will be on this week. And just a lot of other great stories that we're excited to share. And as I mentioned, the Dan Gable five-part documentary series will be going live in August. And that's going to be awesome. Just think of the 30 for 30 podcast. 30 for 30 documentaries. It's just like that, but only for wrestling. So season one's Dan Gable. Season two is a surprise right now, but we're going to be releasing it in August. Thanks again, folks. Peace!